Well, quite frankly, I, I don't know about any listings, but, but what I do know is that, uh, you know, my job and, and, and my passion uh, in this game is to try to make every player that's under my tutelage the best player he can possibly be. Um, it's fortunate when you have someone like Terrell who has worked so hard to, to make a transition from a quarterback position to a difficult position in the National Football League, which is a wide receiver. And uh, every day we see things that he does better than the day before. Um, he's worked extremely hard. Uh, through this first phase of, of football, um, I think we're all really, really proud and really feel great about where Terrell is. Now, the next step is to play real football. And what, are you, and, what are you looking for in real football? Are you getting hit and holding on or what? I look for Terrell to be able to, from a technique standpoint and an assignment standpoint, play like he's played without pads on in a non-contact environment. And uh, that, that's a real step for everybody. It's a real step for these young rookies. It's a step for every player on the football team, regardless of the position, is a lot of times when you're, you're learning skills and now all of a sudden you're against other people, you're against uh, a different looks, the speed of the game will change a little bit. And it's, it's just another developmental process for every player. And, and Terrell is no different. You know, he's going from a from an environment that's uh, you know controlled to a degree, to now an environment uh, in in Green Bay that that uh, you know they're trying to do some things different than we do on the practice field. The speed of the game will be different, um, but I've got uh, every confidence that if he continues to work as he has worked up to this point, that uh, this test will just be another one that he uh, he passes. Can he be an every down receiver? You know, I, I'm I'm not sure. You know how, how that translate. I know this that that he, he's working as hard as he can to be the best football player he can be, and uh, you know I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays Friday night and then the next weekend and the next weekend and the next weekend because um, he's at a he's at a point right now. This this is really a hard transition for anybody to make. I, I think I'm trying to think back maybe. Antoine Randall is the one guy that I've coached that has gone from a quarterback to a receiver and and really done an exceptional job and and like I say we, we couldn't be any more happier than where Terrell is right now but he knows he has a lot of things to work on and a lot of things to improve on and you know it's not all going to happen overnight it's going to take time you know this is his first exposure to that position but uh, I, myself personally I, I couldn't be any more thrilled with where he is right now. Did, Al, Did we go position by position you know Coleman the rookie Prior, only a couple NFL catches. So, uh, um, on and on. Hawkins coming off an injury. Uh, you know, there's kind of an issue or two with uh, every guy in your stable. Oh, I tell you what, it's exciting. You know, really. I mean, working with those guys and the effort and energy they put forward ever since OTAs, the hard work they're doing on the field, watching every one of those guys improve in their technique and skill, and you know, it's a wonderful group. I mean, our meeting room is just phenomenal, and they they've all developed great bonds with each other. They help each other. Uh, they they enjoy working with each other, and you can't teach experience. But, but what you can teach is fundamentals and techniques and, and, and learn how to learn and effort and all those things. We, you know, we always tell them, you know, there's, there's four things you got to do. You, you got to know what to do. You got to know how to do it. You got to do it with energy and enthusiasm. And you got to do it all the time. You know, so your assignment and your technique and your effort and, and your consistency determine your value. And so every day when we look at practice, that's what we focus on. Every game in preseason, that's what we'll focus on. And, and the only thing those guys can do is continue to work at the level that they've worked at, and then, then the chips fall where they may. I told them the first meeting I had with them when the year started, my goal is first of all, is that every single guy sitting in this room has an opportunity to enjoy a career in the National Football League, some way, shape, or form. You know, there's only so many seats in our boat, but there are a lot of, a lot of lifeboats out there around the league that they may have an opportunity to fill. And I've always treated everybody like a first round draft choice. I mean, I, I, there's, I, I, I treat Corey Coleman no different than I treat our free agent wide receiver, Dennis Parks, because to me, that's my job. I mean, my job is to make sure that they do the very best job they can and to watch their improvement. And, and they're kind of like my kids, you know, maybe my grandkids at my age, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but they're, they're wonderful kids. And, and, and that's what, what, what happens and, and where everybody ends up. I and mean, we haven't even started to evaluate that yet because we haven't played football yet. What, um, you know, we talk about Coleman and, and Pryor all the time. What, what, who are some of the guys that maybe sort of under the radar but are uh, really caught your eye? Well, qu quite honestly, I, I think if you took our roster and, and looked at every single receiver we have, in my opinion, 
every one of those guys has the capability of playing in the National Football League. Now, some some qualities and some needs are from other teams and from our team would will, will differ, but I think they all have the physical skills to be able. If somebody develops those guys and gives them the opportunity to play, I think every one of those guys in that group have the opportunity to play in the National Football League. Yeah, what have you? Um, go ahead. Corey Coleman isn't the tallest receiver in the world, but we've already seen that he's a dynamic player. Uh, with Odell Beckman and Antonio Brown being less than six feet, uh, right around there, is there a trend back to those guys? rather than the 6'4", Calvin Johnson. Yeah, you know, I don't know if there's a trend back to those guys. I mean, I've had a lot of experience coaching guys like, you know, Charlie Joyner and, you know, who's in the Hall of Fame down there, you know, Andre Risen, you know, Antoine Randall, Santana Moss, uh, Landry last year in, in Miami. I mean, you don't have to be 6'4 to be a great receiver in this league. What you have to be able to do is you have to change direction, you have to get separation, you have to be able to catch football. And uh, I, I don't think that there's a there's a marquee on how tall and physical you have to be. You know, when Bill Walsh came into this league and he and I went to the same school, played for the, the, the same people at San Jose State, and as, as did Dick Vermeil. And Bill developed what everybody considers the West Coast offense. Well, when you look at the players that he had, he had John Taylor, and he had, who's that other guy over there? That, you know, oh, Jerry Rice, yeah. He had John Taylor and Jerry Rice. And, and the prototype of that athlete in his system were big physical guys. And the, the genesis of that system really is, is slants, hooks, curls, shallow cross and drive. Big physical guys that can catch the ball inside, you know, against linebacker types, um, and that can catch the ball in a contested environment because it's not an upfield vertical passing game. It's more West Coast offense. It's lat as Bill would say, it's an extended handoff. Well the, the priority in that offense, you better have big physical guys because when you're running routes that you run up the field and come back, you're in an area where you know, a physical nature is needed because you're going to be in a contested environment. You know, I'm from the Don Coriel school with, with Charlie Joyner and Wes Chandler and John Jefferson and Kellen Winslow and those guys, and it's vertical speed, it's separation, it's get up the field, and so it's a different style of play. So when you have guys that aren't big and physical, what you have to do is put a priority on the ability to separate and, and get speed, and that's what we would do with Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman's a vertical player. Now, he'll learn all those other things, but he's a vertical player. He, he's, he's got undeniable speed. And what we've got to be able to do is teach him to get out of his breaks with efficiency. We've got to be able to separate laterally as well as we separate vertically. So size, in my estimation, in the receiver position is, is not an issue. But what you've got to do is devise a system and devise the kind of things that those guys can do so they aren't in contested environments all the time. Does that makes make sense? Yeah. Is a guy like that who depends so much on speed when he has a hamstring, is that concerning or is it just part of the game? For me, a hangnail would be concerning <laughs> if you have that kind of speed, you know. But you know, our, our trainers are phenomenal, and uh, you know, he's kept out of practice. He had, he's had a history of soft tissue injuries. He's had three or four hamstring pulls. He had a groin surgery, you know, recently. So you know, we just want to make sure that he's right and ready to go. He's worked extremely hard. I, I think if you ask him and his coach that was here uh, from Baylor, he's never worked as hard in his life. He, he's never had to run consistently as far or as hard. He's never really had to be involved in the running game and be a blocker. So he's learning a lot of different phases of the game. And the, the most important thing for us is make sure that he doesn't break down physically so he's unable to do the things that we want him to do when he's healthy. So this is more of a precaution than anything. Speaking of Baylor, how do you uh, implement Gordon into the practice routine while still developing these other guys and worrying about the season? Yeah, you know, um, Josh has been with the trainers doing the physical rehabilitation he needs for his quad injuries. He's, from what I understand, that's progressing real well. He is in, oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. He's involved in the walkthroughs every day. He's involved in our meetings. And, and I'll tell you what, he, he's a voracious student now. I mean, in, in the meeting room, He's tremendous. He is absolutely tremendous. He, he, he's learning the system. He's doing a tremendous job of, of studying off the field. Uh, I, I'm really, really excited about how he's approached what we're doing. And, and our room, when I say our room, the players in that room have, 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 t have really gravitated to him. And I think he feels really good about the players and the people that are in that room with him. So he's been in walkthroughs. He will continue to be in walkthroughs. Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly of what the timeline is for him to be able to be on the field and actually participate. So we'll approach that when we get to it. But the uh, like time he gets into a game shape, he'll be going on suspension. So. What can we expect from Gordon this year? 
I, I can't answer that. You know, I, I, I wish I could. I, I really don't know. I, I know that if he's healthy uh, and, and he is acclimated to what we're doing mentally from an assignment standpoint, uh, there's no denying what his physical talents are. I mean, one year in this National Football League, he got 1,600 yards, I think, in passes, and, and he went to the Pro Bowl. You know, uh, he's had a little little break right now. He might be fresher than he's ever been. So we just got to you know, make sure he's in, in, the, in the same you know, path as we are when he comes back, and that's my job to do, and I guarantee he's going to be there. Are you going to need uh, for prior to have a ton of reps in the preseason games to see if he can take the good things he's done out here uh, onto an actual? Well, I, I yeah, I, I, every game is different in the preseason, and, and we'll have a, an agenda for each and every player. Um, and Terrell's agenda will be dependent on what we've seen of his performance uh, Friday night. We'll have a, a plan going in Friday, just how much we'll play him, just as we will every other guy. And uh, the next week will determine, be determined by his performance. And we, you know, you can go into a game and intend to throw a guy the ball four or five times, and because of the defense or the structure, he never gets it. Or you go to a Ohio State scrimmage, don't really plan to throw it to him a lot, and he catches like 500 balls for 3,000 yards in the first half down there. You know, so y that's sometimes hard to. It's sometimes hard to judge, but we'll, we'll do that on a week-to-week -week basis. What, what he did down there, what did that say to you? said that he was really happy to be home. Now, you've been with so many teams, and you've been a head coach. Um, what's your philosophy? What's the best way to approach these preseason games? Win versus evaluation? Yeah, that, that's a delicate question, and, and I think all 32 coaches in the National Football League sometimes approach it differently. Winning is, is usually always important, and we always – you know, whether you're playing tiddlywinks or, you know, whatever you're doing, you, we're competitors, and so everybody wants to win. And generally the standard bear is, you know, regardless of who's on the field, we're playing to win and we expect to win. And, and But really, the, 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 the most important thing in preseason is to choose your team. And if your new staff like we are, is be able to function together as a staff offensively and defensively, make sure that the things you're doing from a base concept systematically, offensive, defensive, special teams are, are in line with the players that you have. Um, so there's a, it's a two-edged sword. It's Mike McCarthy will have a totally different objective going into this preseason game on Friday than we will. I mean, those guys have been together for a long time. They've got a, a pretty established quarterback there. You know, they've got a system that they know real well. It's the same coaching staff for years. So, you know, what we we have we're in all in a learning phase right now with the people that we have. So, um, sometimes it, it's. You know the the importance of winning is always there, but but it's always the the most prioritized thing in preseason is pick your team, make sure that we're doing the right thing fundamentally sound in in offense, defense, and special teams, and develop from there. Because each week is a new chapter and tell you how far you've gone. Uh, where, do you get the, go ahead. where do you get the energy to to run around with those guys and and be as vocal <laughs> and as as outgoing as you are with them? You know. I, I, I get asked that a lot, you know, and, and I, I don't know that I have any more energy than anybody else. It's just my style. I'm a little bit more animated than maybe a lot of people. I, I love the players I work with. And, and for me, when you're in a meeting room and you're watching video and you're, you're lecturing them on how to do things and you're trying to coach them and all of a sudden they do it, 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 that to me is the most exciting thing. We're teachers, you know, and, and, and to think a coach is anything else is, is really probably not accurate. You know, we're trying to teach players, you know, in our area of expertise, the way to do it right. And when I see someone do it right, it excites me tremendously because I know how important it is to these guys. And, and I try every day to give everything I've got to them to enable them to achieve their goals. And when I see somebody do something really well, I, I'm really excited about it. That's, I, that's just my human nature, I when guess. When I asked you about sure. some under the radar guys, like Rennell mm -hmm. Hall, mm -hmm. what, uh, what, do you, what do you see in, in him? I, I see a National Football League player. I see someone who is very dedicated to his craft. I see someone who has outstanding ability. I see someone who has come an extremely long way in, in the short time I've been here. Uh, there is no question in my mind that, 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 that Rennell Hall has an opportunity to, to play in the National Football League. And uh, you know, we'll find out Friday and the next weekend and the next weekend how he adapts to the game situation. But he's young, he's inexperienced, but he gives me no indication of anything that he's done on the field, off the field, in the classroom, that, that he couldn't be a player in the National Football League.